So if you're dealing with any gallbladder symptoms or maybe some signs that maybe the gallbladder is not working optimally, in this video I'm going to help you understand how gallbladder troubles may lead to some liver troubles. I think this is going to freak you out a little bit. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. Now, just remember that I'm not a doctor and I don't want anything you learn here to keep you from seeking medical advice. None of this is medical advice or diagnostic. I just kind of want to give you some insights into some of how these bodily functions work. So when we're looking at gallbladder symptoms, when you look this up, you find things like, oh man, there's some pain in the right abdomen, like maybe right under here where the gallbladder is. It kind of rests under your liver here. Maybe there's pain under the breastbone, and there's a variety of things that could create that type of pain. Uh, pain between the shoulder blades, pain in the right shoulder. So there's a lot of pain things that can go on with the gallbladder that kind of show up in weird places, but a lot of people seem to agree that these are gallbladder issues in a lot of cases. Uh, we can see nausea or vomiting. Uh, jaundice and that coloring of either your skin or in the whites of your eyes can show up or a light colored stool. All of these are signs that maybe there is trouble going on with the gallbladder. So to understand this relationship between this liver and this little gallbladder, let's look at what the jobs are of these organs. And the liver's job is to filter out junk and toxins from the body. Um, another job of the liver is to produce bile, and bile is this soapy substance that the liver sends down and then stores in that gallbladder. Another job of the liver is to make cholesterol, and there's conversions that the liver is in charge of doing. So for instance, our thyroid hormone, the T4, gets converted by the liver into T3, which is the active version of that thyroid hormone. So it appears that a lot of times when the thyroid is not working correctly, sometimes there's a problem with the liver and its inability to make those conversions that it's supposed to make. If you want to learn more about that, we'll put a link in the description below for our video on the, on the connection between liver issues and hypothyroid. And then when we look at the gallbladder's job, well, its job is to store that bile that the liver makes and sends down and puts into the gallbladder. But another job that it has is to concentrate that bile. It's meant to concentrate that bile while it's storing it in the gallbladder so that a small amount of that bile can be more effective. This bile helps us emulsify our dietary fats. It helps us neutralize acids that leave the stomach and so we can really bust that food apart and get all the nutrients out of that food. The bile helps us be able to assimilate fat-soluble vitamins. So there's a lot of benefits to concentrating that bile so that it can be more effective. And then the gallbladder's other job is to release that bile. So we can, when we consume dietary fats and they come down here into the duodenum, the gallbladder could release some bile down there to help us emulsify those fats. But the main trigger is when this food is acidified in the stomach and it leaves, and this food being acidic in the duodenum is what triggers this gallbladder to squirt that alkaline bile down so it helps neutralize those acids so the acids don't continue to go through here and cause all kinds of trouble. So the gallbladder has some very important jobs to do. So when we're looking at what's going wrong when we're seeing these gallbladder type symptoms over here, we're looking at a gallbladder that is not working correctly. And a lot of times the problem is that the bile has become too thick and sticky and we create what's called gallbladder sludge in that gallbladder. And we can also see gall stones in the gallbladder. And either of those issues can restrict that bile from flowing correctly. But what we want to look at is, is it really the gallbladder's fault that it's not working correctly? And what we see is that there's a lot of things in our world today that have the ability to thicken up that bile so that it won't flow correctly. And if that bile is not flowing through the gallbladder like it should, well, the gallbladder's job is to concentrate its bile. The gallbladder's be like, man, I'm gonna do my job. I do a good job. I like to do a good job. I'm gonna keep doing my job. So it continues to concentrate that bile until it concentrates into sludge or these stones like we're talking about. And when we see a lot of stones or the bile really can't move, then we get those gallbladder attacks and we have these horrible pains like these ah kind of pains, and then we have to have this gallbladder removal type surgery. So before we get to that, let's look at the problems that can come from this bile not flowing like it should and how that can cause trouble for our little friend, the liver up here. So 
A lot of people know that the liver's job is to filter out these junk and toxins and things that need to be removed from the body. What a lot of people don't know is that the liver puts a lot of those toxins into the bile that it's producing. So then the bile comes down here into the gallbladder, and then when the gallbladder releases it, the bile is coming down here into this intestinal tract, and then it carries those filth and toxins that were in that bile through the intestinal tract, so they go out the back door when we poop like a champion. Now, a lot of the bile salts get reassimilated and, and kind of recycled, and we use those again, but the bile substance itself moves through this intestinal tract and out the back door. It's why our stool is a darker color, because this bile is green, and that's what makes our stool a darker color. So when we're seeing these symptoms like a light colored stool, we view that as a sign that bile is not flowing correctly because the stool has not been colored by that green bile. So when we understand what the liver is doing, this is like the main detox pathway for the whole body. Now there's other backup systems that the body can use. It can push things through the kidneys, it can push stuff out through the skin, but the main detox pathway is this bile. So when the bile becomes too thick and sticky to flow correctly, which can happen for a wide variety of reasons, but when it's not flowing, then the toxins that the liver filtered out don't go out the back door. They stay in the system and then they get reassimilated and then those toxins have to be filtered out by the liver all over again. The liver's like, hey, I did this one already. Why are you giving me this again? And then the liver ends up filtering out that same junk over and over again. And then the system becomes more and more toxic. The liver becomes overwhelmed. And it appears that when this liver is overwhelmed, it might not be able to do all of its other jobs as efficiently as it's supposed to. So when we look at the troubles that happen to the liver, it's the liver just being overwhelmed from just this toxic system. If you were to put toxic stuff in your body on a daily basis over and over again, we know that would create liver trouble. We look at alcoholic liver disease and we understand, okay, well that makes sense. They're putting alcohol in there, the liver's gotta filter all that out. Of course, it's going to become diseased. But what if it's just normal toxins that everybody puts in their body and that goes into the system just from our environment, but most people have the ability to filter that out. But if they can't, it's going to go over and over again and now the liver's gonna get overwhelmed, the system is going to become toxic as if we were putting all these toxins in the body on a daily basis, and then we're gonna reduce these liver functions. So obviously we understand that Bile not flowing correctly is not the only way that the liver can become overwhelmed or diseased or not functioning correctly. But when you understand that this is the main detox pathway that the liver is trying to use to get rid of this junk, you can see that this bile flow becomes a really big deal. So we'll put a link to a study in the description below that was kind of showing, hey, look at the correlation here between people that deal with gallstones and have liver disease or liver issues. And when you understand that the gallstones are gonna come about when bile is not flowing and the, the gallbladder just continues to concentrate that bile until it concentrates into stones, then we understand that, oh, that could probably come about when bile is not moving like it should. So when we look at that and we understand this relationship between the gallbladder troubles and the liver troubles, well, the good news is that it appears that the liver is very good at healing and regenerating itself and becoming better at doing the jobs that it needs to do if it's given a chance to do that. So if we can improve bile flow when bile is not flowing correctly, then all of a sudden the toxins can leave the body and the liver's not filtering out the same junk over and over again and it can start doing better at its other jobs as well. So just keep in mind that what I'm saying here is not a scientific fact. I haven't found a study that showed, hey, when you improve bile flow, that it improves liver function. All we're saying is that, well, let's look at the symptoms that come about when the gallbladder is not working correctly. Let's look at the correlation in the study and the description showing that, oh wow, there seems to be a connection when we have gallstones and a gallbladder not working correctly and these liver problems and realize that maybe we need to dig into this a little bit more. Maybe we need to investigate this and see, is there a stronger correlation than we're hearing people talk about? And one thing you could do for yourself is just look, are there signs that my bile is not flowing correctly? We'll put a link in the description below for our video on 10 signs of poor bile flow. And if you feel like you're having liver issues or maybe your liver is not functioning the way that it should, and you're also seeing signs of poor bile flow, well, you could just take some steps to improve your bile flow and see, does that improve liver function for you? 
I'm not saying it's going to do that, but if it does appear to happen for you, then I'm going to be real interested in hearing from you about it. But what we do know is that this bile flow is an important part of our digestive function, and we want it to happen if it doesn't appear to be happening. Now, if someone's had their gallbladder removed, because maybe they already had those gallstones, that doesn't mean that you're in huge trouble and that nothing can work right ever again. A lot of times, this biliary pathway will still flow and the liver can produce that bile and it'll flow down this pathway. It doesn't go into the gallbladder anymore because the gallbladder's not there, but it can still flow into this duodenum so that it can move through the small intestines and carry those toxins out. Now, it is possible for someone to have their gallbladder removed and then this bile was so sludgy and full of stones and stuff that the sludge also backed up into this pathway. A lot of times they'll take this gallbladder out, but they might not clear that pathway. And you could take steps to thin your bile to make sure that pathway is flowing so at least the toxins are going out the back door. Now, if you already feel like your bile might not be flowing correctly, jump over right now and check out our video on five ways to improve bile flow so you can learn how to thin out that bile so that it'll flow correctly. It does seem like anything that would make the liver's job easier and help it remove toxins a little bit better would probably be a good idea. Let us know how it goes.